Hi and welcome to this video where I'm going to be explaining how the bonding in an ionic compound affects the properties of that ionic compound. If you haven't already watched the video on bonding in ionic compounds, I highly recommend you do that before watching this because it will help make everything make a lot more sense. However, just a quick recap first. Remember that ionic solids are made up of ions, so cations and anions, which are usually metals and non-metals. They are held together by strong ionic bonds, which are sometimes known as electrostatic bonds or electrostatic forces. These are the attractions between the positive and negative ions, and they're in a large three-dimensional lattice. Okay, so the fact that you've got lots and lots and lots and lots of these ions all attached together is part of the reason why these are usually solids at room temperature to start with. And that brings us on to the properties. They are hard crystalline solids and they are brittle. They break easily. They typically have high to very high melting and boiling points, usually between sort of 100 and 1000 degrees Celsius for the melting point. Boiling point when we turn it into a gas, that's considerably higher again. A lot of ionic compounds do dissolve in water, although not all do. And they do not conduct electricity as a solid, but will conduct electricity if dissolved in water or heated up and turned into a liquid. So let's start thinking about how and why this happens. First off, if we look at the melting and boiling points, the ionic bonds, that's the attraction, the electrostatic attraction between the positively charged cations and the negatively charged anions, are quite strong. So to melt, to melt or boil the substance, we need to break those bonds. We need to break the ions apart from each other. If you think about what happens when something turns from a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a gas, we apply heat to break the forces that are holding the particles together. In this case, those forces are ionic bonds. And they are quite strong, so they require quite a lot of heat to break. Therefore, ionic compounds have high melting and boiling points because it requires a lot of heat to break the bonds between the particles. In this case, the ionic bonds between the ions. Now, solubility in water. A lot of ionic compounds do dissolve in water. If you think of salt, copper sulfate, various other things, they dissolve in water quite nicely. The reason they dissolve in water quite nicely is because water is a polar molecule. It is polar because it has one end of the molecule which has a partial positive charge on it and the other end has a slight negative charge on it. This means when we take our ionic compound and we mix it with water, the ions will separate apart and the positively charged ions will be attracted to the negatively charged ends of the water molecules and the negatively charged ions will be attracted to the positively charged ends of the water molecule. So the, so the dissolving happens when the particles, the ions, are more attracted to the water molecules than they are to the oppositely charged ion in the lattice. That's why some of them will dissolve and some of them won't, because some of them are more attracted to each other than they are to the water, so they won't dissolve, or they will only very slightly dissolve. And you'll get into more of that at level 3. But basically, it's all about that attraction between the polar water molecule and the positively or negatively charged ions. Okay, brittleness is probably the one that is the hardest to explain and that confuses people the most. And to do, explain this, you really have to visualize that three-dimensional structure of an ion. That idea that you've got the positive and the negative kind of alternating and so the positives are attracted to the negatives and the negatives are attracted to the positives. Now, this makes them quite hard because those bonds are quite strong and quite rigid and quite directional. When I say directional, what I mean is that they are between specific ions. Okay, so this is why if you take a crystal of salt, you can't crush it in your hand, but you can break it if you apply force in exactly the right spot. So if you take your crystal and you hit it with a hammer, so this is applying force. What happens is that you end up breaking the bonds along a specific plane, which shoves the ions along. And that then brings the positively charged ions into contact with each other. 
and the negatively charged ions into contact with each other. So instead of positive and negative being separated out by, sorry, the positives being separated out by the negatives and the negatives being separated out from the positives, all of a sudden positive and positive come together, negative and negative come together. These want to repel each other, so they force each other break apart and that causes the crystal to split or the technical scientific term for it is cleave so you would hear about cleavage planes at times so that's why crystals and ionic compounds are brittle and can break because they the charges come aligned and they split okay so that's that one the final property that we need to think about is electrical conductivity so the key thing to know when you're thinking about electrical conductivity is that conductivity is dependent on the presence of freely moving charged particles. What this means is you've got to have something charged, either electrons or ions, that can move around and carry that charge. Because that's what electricity is, is the movement of charge. So ionic compounds are made up of charged particles, that's our ions. So, okay, we've got charged particles, that's a good starting point. But if we have a solid, we've already talked about the fact that in a solid, those ions are held rigidly and fixed in position through these directional bonds. So the ions can't move. If the ions can't move, then they can't carry charge around. So we can't conduct electricity in a solid. But if we dissolve our ionic compound in water, or we heat it up until it melts and turns into a liquid, then now those ions are now free to move, so they can carry that charge around, and therefore they can conduct electricity. So ionic compounds can conduct electricity when they are a liquid or dissolved in an aqueous solution, because the particles, the charged particles, are freely moving. But they cannot conduct electricity as a solid because the charged particles are fixed in place and therefore cannot move. So those are the key properties of ionic compounds explained in terms of their structure and bonding. In a later video, I will go through how to actually compare and contrast the different types of ionic compounds. Uh, sorry, the different types of properties and substances and look at how you go about applying this knowledge to exam questions. This is just a quick brush over the different types of properties. I hope you found it useful and I'll see you again soon. Bye.